Welcome to Chamber Chat. This is John Tear with our bi-weekly opportunity to check in with our Boulder Chamber membership and the Boulder business community at large about some of the things that are happening at the Boulder Chamber and about some of the important activities and leaders who are helping to get us through this challenging circumstance and many times helping us understand how they're dealing with this COVID-19 pandemic themselves. And in fact, today we have a perfect example of somebody who is getting through COVID and the difficult challenges for his business and his wife's business. Um, and that's Eric Skokin, who is the uh, owner, the farmer and chef for Black Cat Restaurant and um, other enterprises, as he will describe. Um, and he also happens to be our business leader of the year for our celebration of leadership. So we'll have a great chat with Eric and look forward to that. But before I do just a couple of announcements from our end, that thing happening at the Boulder Chamber. So first, you asked for it, we listened. And we know that there was so much interest in our last business after hours speed networking event that we decided to bring it to the morning hours. So on March 11th from eight to nine, grab your favorite morning beverage of your choice and sit down and get ready to swap information, make connections and build your business network through a speed networking business before hours. Guarantee it's a great way to connect with business leaders, engage with the Boulder Chamber and to help develop your business in this online crazy COVID environment. So get ready, that's on March 11th from eight to nine. Then in addition, we have an event so big, an after hours gathering, if you will, so large that we're calling it the Mega Mixer. And what is this? Well, it's the Northwest Chamber Alliance, all of our colleagues in that organization coming together to have a joint after hours event on March 24 at 5 p.m. So we're gonna mix it up with representatives and businesses and all the members from the Latino Chamber, from the Broomfield Chamber, the Longmont Chamber, the Superior Chamber, the Lafayette Chamber, the Louisville Chamber, the LGBTQ Chamber, the Broomfield Chamber, and the Boulder Chamber. I hope I didn't miss any because it is gonna be a mega mixer and it's a great chance to connect, have some fun and just generally connect with leaders, business leaders from across Boulder and Broomfield counties. So join us on March 24th, and that's at 5 p.m. Register today. And then finally, I just wanna make sure that all of our Boulder Chamber membership has March 9th on their calendar because that's gonna be a magical celebration of leadership. Celebration of leadership is always an opportunity to recognize business leaders in our community who not only have had great business success, but have lifted our community through their own volunteer work, and through their, their own um, example of leadership. And we're gonna celebrate all of them on March 9th. It's gonna be a fabulous gathering. So make sure to register. It's free to register for anybody. Uh, for all for our members, but also there's an opportunity to get a great appetizer plate from the Spice of Life Catering for two or four folks. So it's a wonderful uh, meal, little little snack to enjoy while you're watching the celebration of leadership. So I urge you to get registered, order your appetizer plate from Spice of Life Catering, and join us on March 9th at 6 p.m. And we're going to celebrate some amazing individuals and business leaders. And one perfect example, as I said earlier, of the types of business leaders we're gonna recognize during the celebration of leadership is a guest with me today, and that is Eric Skokin. Now, Eric joins us from his, uh, the Black Cat Central Organization Nerve Center on his new computer, so I hope it's gonna work. Um, but I just thank you so much for being with us, Eric, today. Um, and just excited to chat with you um, as somebody who we, you know, we know personally has been um, dealing 
with the COVID-19 experience as a business owner, but also your family has suffered a, a personal tragedy of, of death of your son. Um, and what it speaks to, to me is perseverance. And I wonder just if you could maybe mention, uh, Eric, how, how have you and your partner, Jill, and your family persevered through this COVID-19 experience, both from a business perspective, but also personal? Oh, I, uh, sometimes, sometimes I don't know. Um, you know, we have, um, uh, we have days where it's really easy, um, you know, where, you know, it seems like life, you know, sort of pulls us, you know, forward, um, you know, go take care of the sheep or, um, you know, uh, run my son over to, uh, his, uh, his track practice or, or whatever. I mean, those things, you know, for me are, are, you know, our joys. Um, and, um, you know, and then sometimes, uh, Jill and I and the, and the kids have to, you know, uh, uh, pull from within to, to, you know, figure out how to, how to be able to move forward. And, you know, this, this year has been, um, you know, it's been really, really challenging. Um, we have so much going for us, um, with, with, and, and, and thank God that we do, um, you know, we have, we have each other. Um, uh, Jill is my, oh, and always has been my best friend. Um, uh, yeah, ab absolutely. Um, you know, we, we, we talk about, you know, the business, we talk about each other, we, um, enjoy everything together, uh, you know, without, uh, Jill, um, I don't think I could have made it through this year. I, you know, absolutely. Um, part of perseverance for us has been, um, you know, falling into the arms of everybody here in the community. Um, uh, on the on the afternoon that Kelsey was killed, I, you know, said to Jill, "I'm done. Like I'm, I'm, I am absolutely done." And um, you know, and then she grabbed onto me and and said, you know, Eric, we have all these employees. We can't we can't throw in the towel. Um, it's not fair to them, and it's not you know it it just doesn't it just doesn't make any sense. And then you know she carried me for a while, and then you know and then it was my turn to carry her. Jill said, I'm done. <laughs> you know I can't I uh, you know I can't do this anymore. And then I pick her up and I carry her as well. And so you know thank goodness we have each other, and. Um, uh the the gofundme um uh you know a gift that was given to us uh to you know basically take care of the operation and give us the time and the space to to uh to step away from everything and work on ourselves and and try to heal i mean that was um just you know uh, it was directly from heaven it was and and heaven ends up being like this 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 group of people that we, you know, that we get to live with this, this community. Um, so, so many condolences and, uh, messages and hugs and, um, uh, uh, words of support, uh, from, uh, an, literally an uncountable number of people. Um, you know, Jill and I know that, uh, Boulder, is um, is a collection of people who live near each other, um, but it really is ultimately it's it is a community, and uh, and we've seen that um, uh, you know all, all the way through, and it's deep and it's rich and it's uh, well woven together, and people here care about each other, um, and we're so fortunate to be to be a part of all of it. Um, so you know perseverance for us maybe in just COVID times, you know, not with the, the personal tragedy uh, has a lot to do with, um, uh, you know, having a lot of the little things to take care of. Uh, I was, uh, I just came out of the greenhouse a few minutes ago and I, I have estimated I have you know, one and a half million little plants in the, uh, in the greenhouse. And, and, you know, I have, I have days uh, still when I just, I, it's really hard to, um, you know, to pull the whole thing together. And, uh, um, but I go in and I see, all, I see everything that we have, you know, 
that we're working on uh, and I can't let them down and uh, um, all, you know, all the little uh, tiny celery plants or whatever. And uh, you know, so that keeps us going. And, and, you know, I circle back to what Jill said about our uh, employees that, you know, we can't, we can't let them down. And, and, um, and for us, that's baked into uh, it's one of the, the, the core values of, um, you know, of our business is that, um, you know, we expect the staff to be in it for us to uh, be there with us and to help us when, when bad things happen and the staff always has been. And, uh, and then the other half of that bargain is that Jill and I are always there uh, for, for the staff as well. And, you know, there are days when I don't want to persevere, uh, but at the same time, I'm, I'm not willing to let my staff down. I'm not willing um, to let, you know, my family down either. And those are the, that's that kind of you know, gut check of uh, um, keeping going, um, even though uh, it certainly would be a lot easier to not, um, not keep going and, yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it's interesting. I, I read a Wall Street Journal um, article the other day, and it just one of the things they did touch on was that effort that you've made, you and Jill have made to maintain your workforce and to keep them engaged with all of the new type of work activities you wanted to take on um, in order to keep the business flourishing during this, this COVID uh, time. And it's, I just wonder maybe just for those who are, who are also considering um, the importance of their workforce, the relationship with they, they have with them, um, what was the approach you took with your workforce as you understood the impact that COVID-19 would have on the business and, and how uh, what you know what tricks what what thoughts went through your head in terms of how you were going to maintain that relationship and, and the commitment that you described to keeping them on board yeah um you know at, at right at the very beginning i um you know when when the whole you know the whole house of cards of you know the economy um and all the businesses everything was started to fall apart um i you know i took stock of you know the the, the handful of you know, really, really important things, and um, and taking care of the taking care of the staff. That was um, take care of the family, take care of the staff. Like that's what we that's what we have to do. And um, and then, every from my perspective, everything is on the table. Um, that uh, you know, we we need to uh, buy time. We need to get creative, and uh, we need to you know have really difficult financial conversations with you know, with individual staff members. And, and that went something like, um, you know, we're all in this lifeboat together and this is a stormy sea at night. And if we stick together, we, you know, we can do it. And being in a being in a lifeboat in the open sea is miserable. There's nothing great about any of it, um, but it, it's one step better than, <laughs> than demise. And, you know, so the, the financial conversations went something to the effect of, you know, tell me what you're paying in rent, tell me what you're paying in bills, um, tell me what you, you absolutely have to have each month in order to get by so that we can buy time. And, um, and then, you know, Jill and I, we, we went through the whole, the, the, the entirety of the staff. Um, and, you know, we, that gave us a financial you know, a, you know, a, a sort of a budget of like, all right, we, we really need to bring in this kind of revenue. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, this employee and that employee, you know, they need to make, you know, that amount of money in order to, to make it happen. And then we started working backwards from that, that financial goal, which was an absolute, like we, we have to figure out how to, how to do this. Um, and then, you know, we sent started sending up trial balloons like one after another. Oh, let's try this. Let's try that. Da, 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 and the other thing. And 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 I knew, you know, sort of intuitively that you know uh, that there was going to be like no one you know thing that was going to no one business plan that was going to solve everything. Um, uh, that it was probably going to end up being you know with an org with an organization as large and diverse as ours that we were probably going to need you know a, a you know a handful of three four five 
um, different businesses all sort of chipping away at what this 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 goal was. And uh, you know, and 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 we got there. Um, we you know uh, we we did the takeout. We did we uh, we created. Uh, you know, an online grocery store. We were doing deliveries of grocery items, and we started doing, you know, Mabel the farm truck, um, which was a just that was ab absolutely a, a blast. I started, you know, uh, planning on and working towards doing farm dinners, uh, you know, out here um, at at the farm, um, and you know, and 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 five, six, seven other. We created two ghost restaurants that, uh, um, you know, that we just put up online. Um, and, uh, I mean, we tried, you know, really everything that we, that we possibly could. Um, and all of it, um, was about, you know, I mean, the, the, the purpose in all of it was to, um, you know, start up this little business and, um, and, hope that it would end up being a break-even business and that we could now employ four more people, right? We need four people to do that. And we need, you know, if we did this as well, then we could hire four, four more people to do that over there. And then, you know, with bits and pieces, uh, we were able to bring back the entirety of the staff. Um, and then, in, and then interestingly, for a period, we were actually, we had, you know, more people employed, um, in I think the month of June than we had employed in the month of June previous year, which is kind of crazy. Who would have thought? And, you know, and for a little, you know, for a period of, of time in there, we, you know, we're break even. And, um, you know, I think I even made like, you know, $183 or something like that, you know, in one month. Was, oh my God, I can't believe it. Um, you know, there and the, the rest of the months, instead of bleeding, you know, 20,000 a month, um, or more, um, uh, instead we were, you know, we were bleeding, you know, a thousand or 2000 a month. Um, and, you know, we looked at our cash reserves and we had then created, um, a, uh, this kind of crazy plate of spaghetti with all this stuff all over the place. There's no order to anything and very much fly by the seat of our pants. But this plate of spaghetti was, was keeping everybody employed and it was buying us time. And when we then f were able to look out into the future to forecast it, um, you know, we, we knew we were gonna be able to make it. If we, we could, uh, you know, uh, keep working on this, you know, crazy spaghetti plate or whatever. Um, and, um, you know, and those little successes, um, bring four employees back. That's, you know, that's cause for celebration. And, um, you know, and we all need to celebrate like, man, um, uh, you know, forcing ourselves to celebrate is, uh, you know, is a, is a really, really, really important thing. Um, uh, Jill and I are almost at the point where I think we'd be able to celebrate, um, you know, little, little successes coming up again. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's what we did. It's, it's an amazingly beautiful story, Eric. And I, and so you, you've mentioned perseverance. We've talked about, you know, what that means to you. We've talked about relationships, the staff, your, your family um, will push you through. Um, we've also touched on some of the innovations that uh, led to your ability to survive and, and in essence thrive through this experience. Um, so I'm wondering just as you reflect back now on you know, where you've come from and where you are today, and then looking forward, hopefully to the passing of this, this COVID-19 pandemic. Um, what innovations and, and what learnings will you take forward into uh, the future for um, the, the Black Cat um, uh, businesses? Um, for, for as painful as, as all, all of this has been, um, I, you know, I think I'm better for it. Um, I have learned so much about uh, everything from arc welding to uh, restoring old uh, ice cream trucks. And uh, so much, I know so much more about that now than I ever, ever wanted to. But what, one of the, 
one of the so that's one of the gifts I think that we've been given is is that we're smarter and we're more experienced uh, and we're certainly more confident. Um, uh, we have we have a lot to feel you know grateful about uh, in terms of what we in terms of what we've accomplished. Uh, but one of the biggest things is that I and I think all of us have seen this that um, instead of having this you know sort of this drive or this focus to become more and more refined and efficient in one small area um, instead of you know um, trying to save tenths of cents in this one little thing um, that uh, that having a, a broad uh, range of skills and competencies um, and assets um, available um, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of, you know, like, you know, our personal finances, um, it's kind of like our personal finances where, uh, you know, we, you don't put all your money in, in into one spot, you know, you have some over here and, 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 and you're diversified across that our businesses, I think, uh, need to look the same, the same way. Um, ad additionally, um, I look at employees now now different far differently than i did before you know before i i had a specific job you're a bartender or you're a sommelier uh, or you're a farmer um, and i looked for the specific experience that would let me know whether or not that person was a, going to be able to do that job successfully um, and uh, you know and then obviously in this last year that none of that really matters anymore because our worlds, especially in the restaurant industry, have, have been thrown upside down. Um, now I'm looking for people. Um, I'm not looking at resumes anymore. I'm looking at uh, and, and really thinking about who the people are that we're hiring. Um, are they resilient? Are they durable? Um, are they upbeat? Um, do they, are they driven by a sense of giving back uh, or by taking in? Um, and, you know, and, and they're, I think that there's a personality type. Uh, there's a you know there's sort of a mindset um, that uh, has lent itself towards uh, you know being sex successful when you're being tossed about in the lifeboat uh, out in the sea, and that is um, you know resilience, um, uh, you know diligence, um, and uh, you know and a desire to like you know see and learn everything around instead of you know focusing in on one on the one specific. Hmm. I, I have to tell you, Eric, you inspire me. <laughs> and I'm, I, I very much uh, know that your, your wife and partner, Jill, would as well, and she's out of town, couldn't join us today. But um, it's, it's, it, it um, leads me to say that um, you're the character of business leader. We love to celebrate at the celebration of leadership and the fact that you're getting our, yeah. our business leader of the year. I mean, it's it speaks to person who is both successful, innovative, um, but does it with a passion and a heart that um, recognizes it. You describe the type of employee you want um, is exactly the kind of person, you know, you it appear, you know, appear, I, mean, I can tell that you are. Um, and that is giving um, well as well to the community that, that, um, that you serve. So I thank you so much for sharing your story with us today. Um, and I look forward to honoring you um, and your wife, Jill, at the Celebration of Leadership. So thank you so much for, for the time. Uh, very much appreciate that, Eric. Um, so much my pleasure. Yep. Thank well, you. Well, let me just close then with just a, a reminder that March 9th is that Celebration of Leadership where you can learn more about Eric and our other uh, wonderful business leaders who we are going to be honoring um, and paying tribute to during this important celebration event for the Boulder Chamber, for the business community, and for our community at large. So March 9th, 6 p.m., make sure to have it on your calendar, order that Spice of Life appetizer plate, and we'll look forward to seeing you online. And then, as I always like to conclude our chamber chats, and that is a reminder, that we're gonna get through this. We're almost there, the light at the end of the tunnel. We need to get vaccinated when you can, okay? Make sure to do that. So follow the, the guidelines, check in with your health officials or uh, healthcare providers to know when it's your turn. 
but always we want to make sure that we're preventing the spread of that disease. And the best way to do that is to wear your mask. And we'll see you in a couple of weeks on Chamber Chat.